welcome to First Chapter Friday, where every Friday I read the first chapter, or something like that, of a book I think you might want to finish yourself. During this month, March, we've been doing books about women, as it's Women's History Month. So I wanted to end up with one that covered a lot of women. So the book we're going to look at today is called She Did It, 21 Women Who Changed the Way We Think. It's by Emily Arnold McCulley. Um, and the back is really cool. It says, meet the bold women who dared to make a difference. I'm not going to read from the inside flap because it's just going to talk about all the different women. And there are a lot of them. And of course, these aren't the only 21 who ever changed our world. But I thought I would read the biography of one of them to give you a sense of what the book is like. We're going to start with Dolores. Huerta. And you can see they did a nice picture of her. The labor organizer who said, yes, we can. Dolores Huerta, a Latinx American labor organizer and educator, is still working to change the world for the better. Born during the Depression when money was tight, she knew mistreated migrant workers and felt the sting of discrimination herself. Huerta was determined to fight for the right of everyone to earn a decent wage. Together with Cesar Chavez, she founded the United Farm Workers. The strikes and boycotts of table grapes and lettuce organized by the union won major victories for farm workers in the 1960s and 70s. Huerta's work changed the way Americans felt about the people who harvested their food. With her courage and eloquence, she changed people's minds about women's roles, too. Dolores Fernandez was born on April 10, 1930, in Dawson, New Mexico, a mining town. Her father, Juan, labored in a mine and on farms. Life was hard for the family, but he was committed to helping his fellow workers. Like her parents, Dolores was steeped in the culture and politics of the Latinx community. When she was three... Her parents divorced and she moved with her mother, Alicia, and two brothers to Stockton, California, another community of farm workers. Back in New Mexico, Juan Fernandez organized workers for a union, an association formed to protect the workers' rights. He was also elected to state office. Although geography separated Dolores from her father, she was inspired by his life and work. Finding her way. Dolores' mother struggled to support her children. Eventually, she prospered enough to open a restaurant and hotel for migrant workers. She allowed people to stay and eat even when they couldn't pay. At home, she made culture and education priorities, managing to find the money to afford such privileges as music and dance lessons for the children. Her hard work and her values were an inspiration to her daughter. Dolores played the violin and piano, danced, and was a Girl Scout and a drum majorette. She was a talented writer as well. But one day in high school, a teacher accused her of plagiarism. The teacher assumed a Latina lacked the ability to write well in English. Dolores knew it was racial bias. She also witnessed violent police attacks on immigrants, many of them her friends. Her instinct already was to find a way to fight back. But first, she fell in love, got married, had two children, and was divorced, all before she graduated from college. She taught school for a while, but gave it up because her students, the children of migrant workers, were too hungry to pay attention. She needed to find another way to address their problems. I couldn't tolerate seeing kids come to class hungry and needing shoes, Huerta later said. I thought I could do more by organizing farm workers than by trying to teach their hungry children. Community organizing. Her life changed when she met Fred Ross, a charismatic community organizer. He started the local Stockton chapter of the Community Services Organization, CSO, a grassroots group dedicated to ending segregation and police brutality. Fred had managed to have police put in jail for beating up Latinx people. Dolores helped lead the Stockton CSO. She registered voters and lobbied the all-white male legislature to provide public assistance to workers who were not citizens. She married a fellow activist named Ventura Huerta and eventually had five more children with him. They campaigned together for a law to protect the civil rights of Spanish-speaking workers. For her, it was an emotional crusade. 
She never forgot the dirt floors she saw when she visited one farm worker's ramshackle home. How could society ignore the needs of the hardworking people who provided its food? Teaming up with Cesar Chavez, in 1960, Dolores Huerta formed a group called the Agricultural Workers Association, AWA, which was devoted to helping farm workers. She had also met Cesar Chavez, the director of the CSO. They realized they had a common goal. Together, Huerta and Chavez would change the course of labor history. In 1962, she and Chavez left the AWA and CSO and founded the National Farm Workers Association. Chavez was president and Huerta vice president. He was the dynamic speaker and she was the organizer and tough negotiator. Though in time, she became a dynamic speaker in her own right. They adopted the slogan, Viva la Casa, long live the cause. Where to urge women to take active roles in the organization and demanded that they be treated as equals by the men. By then she had seven children. To do her work, she often had to leave them in the care of others. Federal Civil Rights Act, banning discrimination on the basis of race and sex had passed in 1964. It was a good time to fight for the rights of immigrant workers too. In 1965, the Farm Workers Association joined a strike against rose growers. Workers on the farms had to graft the roses. The job involved crawling down rows of thousands of plants, cutting slits in the stems, and inserting buds. The pay was supposed to be $9 for every thousand grafts, but the farm workers usually got only $7. Where to gathered workers together and told them to touch a crucifix and promise not to break the strike. They all promised strike was a success. The owner signed a contract raising wages within a week. The great boycott. Huerta and Chavez next tackled California's grape growers. Grape pickers worked without toilets or even drinking water in the hot vineyards. A group of Filipino grape pickers in Delano, California had stopped working to protest their low wages. Chavez and Huerta rallied the Mexican grape pickers and in 1965 all of them went on strike. The organizers demanded a reduction in the use of dangerous chemical pesticides, higher pay, unemployment, and health benefits for the workers. The owners fought back, unleashing attack dogs on the striking workers, spraying thick dust and pesticides on them, and sending thugs to beat them up. The owners hired thousands of non-union substitute Mexican workers, known as scabs, to continue the harvest. But Huerta went to El Paso, where the new workers were streaming across the border and handed out leaflets, asking them not to work for the Delano grape growers. Many came anyway, but not all. Finally, in 1966, one grower agreed to a new contract. Huerta negotiated the terms and signed it for the union, which was now called the United Farm Workers. There was much more to do. Huerta went to New York City, a major distribution point for grapes. Her mission was to persuade stores to stop selling and consumers to stop buying table grapes. If enough people took part in this boycott, the growers would have to agree to better working conditions. She went to work organizing a coalition of student, religious, labor, feminist, and consumer groups, crossing the racial, ethnic, and class lines to pressure stores not to sell grapes. The boycott was a success. Where to kept the strike in the news and grapes stayed off many American tables for years. The strike was supported by 1968 presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy, RFK as he is known, became close with Huerta and Chavez. Many hoped a second Kennedy administration, following that of RFK's brother, the assassinated President John F. Kennedy, would improve the lot of immigrant workers. That spring, Huerta was with RFK when he too was shot dead in Los Angeles after winning the California primary. The union was devastated by the loss, as were many other Americans. The strike lasted five years, and eventually the boycott extended to lettuce and gallo wine to protect those workers as well. Throughout, the growers used violence to intimidate the strikers, but in the end, the farm workers won. Huerta's navigating skill led to a provision in the contract banning the pesticide DDT well before it was banned by the federal government. During this campaign, she invented the slogan, Si se puede, which means yes, we can. Years later, at a White House ceremony honoring where to President Barack Obama would admit that his campaign had stolen the phrase from her. Before that, people had credited Cesar Chavez with coining the slogan. 
and never-ending fight. In 1975, the California State Legislature passed the Agricultural Labor Relations Act. For the first time, the right of farm workers to gather together and bargain on behalf of their group was protected by law. It was a great victory for farm workers, but was one of the last. After 1980, the Reagan administration pushed policies that weakened labor unions, and they have never recovered. But Dolores Huerta went on fighting. During the 1960s and 70s, she was arrested 22 times while striking and protesting working conditions. During a violent attempt by the Teamsters Union to take over the United Farm Workers, her house was vandalized and people pointed guns at her and her family. She never wavered. During the 1980s, she campaigned for fair immigration laws, better health conditions for farm workers, and women's rights. In 1988, she took part in a rally at a fundraiser in San Francisco against the policies of presidential candidate George H.W. Bush and was beaten so badly by a police officer she nearly died. As she grew older, her activism took the form of lecture tours and writing. Feminism became a signature issue. In 1991, she went around the country seeking Latino women to run for office. In 1998, Ms. Magazine named her Woman of the Year. In 1993, she became the first Latina woman inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. That year also brought great sadness. She lost her partner and friend when Cesar Chavez died. Dolores Huerta delivered the eulogy at his funeral. In 1998, Huerta was awarded the Eleanor Roosevelt Award for Human Rights by President Bill Clinton. The next year, she retired from the United Farm Workers, but she didn't stop working. In 2002, she led a 165-mile march to the California State Capitol to pressure government to enact new laws protecting workers. And that year, she received the Puffin National Prize for Creative Citizenship, given to someone who has challenged the status quo through distinctive, courageous, imaginative, and socially responsible work of significance. She used the $100,000 award to establish the Dolores Huerta Foundation. Its mission is to train citizens from low-income communities to organize in order to make their voices heard. As the foundation trains activists, Huerta continues to speak out about income equality, immigration, and the rights of Latinx and women. She received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Obama in 2012. Farm workers were the forgotten people. Dolores Huerta brought them and their harsh lives into the light. She helped forge the tools to force growers to treat them more fairly. At the age of 88, she is still speaking forcefully and eloquently for justice and equality. And this is a quote for her, from her. And I want to say to mothers out there, you know, take your children to marches. Take them to meetings because this is a way that they can become strong and they understand what politics is all about because they are actually living it. So that's one of the 21 stories in this book. I hope you'll take a look. Maybe not read all of them, but there's some fascinating women in here that you might find interesting. Thank you so much for joining me again for First Chapter Friday. I hope you'll come again soon. Goodbye.